Uh oh, we have got a problem. I've got water in the tub and we haven't taken our showers yet. I wonder what's going on here. We had a bad rain last night. Oh no, that's wet. Something is going on around the skylight. Let's see what's happening. Hi, this is Jerry with I Love RV Life. Sooner or later, anyone who has an RV is going to have to face this. Uh, something's going to happen, and today it's my turn. The dome, the skylight that exists over our shower and bathtub area has got small cracks all over it. They're everywhere. You know, before we took this trip up to North Carolina, uh, I went over the roof. I, I gave it a good cleaning. I checked all the... Um, you know all the joints that are up there and made sure that all the caulking was in good shape and we didn't have any cracks i always look at our uh, at the fan to make sure that the fan doesn't have any cracks in that dome and i looked at the dome <laughs> that was over the shower and the cracks i guess were so small they just didn't show up so here we go we make this long trip up through south carolina up into north carolina almost on the virginia border and the night we get there, boom, we have a gully washer of a storm that comes through. I came in this morning, tub's got water in it, felt up at the skylight, and sure enough, I've got water coming in the skylight. So I've, I did some temporary repairs uh, to kind of get us by. Uh, unfortunately, I'll show you this. I had, this must have been maybe a gentle drip that just wasn't really showing through and dripping into the shower, I guess for some time. And uh, I had a little bit of mildew. So I'll show you what I've done to address that. Um, it's gonna be a couple weeks before I can get the dome in, the new replacement skylight uh, to replace it. And once that comes in, part two to this video, I'll show you how I'm gonna replace that and uh, do a complete repair here. So this is what I've had to do uh, until I can get the uh, new dome ordered, this new skylight. You can actually see in the corner here where I took some Dicor. I always keep a couple tubes of Dicor with us. And uh, you, once I got up and saw these small cracks, I've got several of them actually. I put some Dicor on the inside and the out uh, just to get us by until we could do you know a permanent repair so that's got the leak stopped and then unfortunately I've already cleaned this up around this edge it's not too bad there's no rot uh, I've checked that but I did have some mildew started to tackle the mildew what I did is I, I keep a spray bottle with some 100% bleach and what I did is I sprayed all around that wood uh, I'll let it dry for about a week and then uh, once that finishes drying I'll go ahead and put this lower dome back on and um, hopefully in a couple weeks, I'll have a new dome to replace it. We've made it home for a couple weeks, and during this period of time, I have ordered the new skylight to be placed on uh, the camper. And um, it's close. It's uh, the same size. The holes are in a different place. I don't think that's going to be a big issue. I'll show you how I'm going to address that. $56 through Amazon. It's not very expensive. A couple basic tools I'm going to be using today. You've seen me use this on multiple projects. Uh, when I put in the new King Air antenna, I use this. When I remodel the kitchen, I use this thing like crazy. Some people call these painter friends, paint scrapers. They're very rigid. It's got a small edge. It's not very sharp. It's great for pulling off this um, self-leveling compound. It's absolutely excellent for that. And I'm going to use a screwdriver, a drill, just some really basic things, and then uh, replace this. So I still have the downstairs area open. Uh, I've had it open for a couple weeks and have treated it several times with Clorox, with bleach, uh, to make sure that the mildew is, uh, you know, is completely been destroyed so we don't have that problem coming back to us later on so uh, I'll replace that as time goes on but uh, for today I've got a nice sunny day and uh, it's a little warm so I've got an incentive to get this done and get it done fast we'll get started you'll see where I did some of the repairs with the uh, Dicor that's plain old Dicor I cannot use Dicor on this roof this is a PVC roof uh, you'll see what I'll be using a little bit earlier. Uh, it's called uh, X-Trim 500 that has to be used. But I'm just going to take this guy here. The only thing I'm going to be hitting is the screws. And you'll just see how easy it is to pull this stuff up. It's not a heavy-duty process. I can push as hard as I want on this plastic. 
and then when I get down to uh, the roof I'm gonna have to be a little bit more cautious so that I don't cut it and snag it that would not make my day and uh, you can see how easy it is to just to get this stuff off there we go off she comes it's a hot summer day fortunately I've tried to do this for about a little over a week now and it has rained like cats and dogs every single day it's a little overcast today and I'm just going to try to get this done super quick I think I can get it done in less than an hour we'll see set your watches now I don't know what the RV repair places would charge you for something like this again the dome's 56 bucks probably more than it's necessary for an hour's worth of work or less and a tube of self-lap sealant you can uh, you see the first step this took just a few minutes I'm going to expose all these screws and then my next steps will be to take all these screws out and then get this top off next effort is going to be to take all these screws out and there is a lot of them this shouldn't take but just a minute as we look at this you can see that I've got all the screws removed and if you can make this out if I can get the detail you can actually see these fine cracks there you know they're running somewhere around the edge I don't know maybe these screws were too tight in here I don't know I've got a real bad one here and uh, you can actually see where these problems actually occurred so you know timely timely we're getting this thing repaired all right I have all the screws out now and uh, we're just going to go around this edge and pop this guy out and what I'm hoping is that I got this soon enough and we don't find any rot so I've got a little point that you'll see on this and I'm going to ever so gently just go around the edge here I'm not pushing hard just going to really just kind of etch around the side because again I don't want to I don't want to cut this roof and uh, just try to get this self-leveling compound to let go of the edge. I don't think this is going to be a big deal here at all. It's going to just peel right off. And I'm going to take this guy here and just ease him under the side. I may have to just gently remove a little bit of this stuff. It'll be easier to get this off once I get the top off. But if you can ever get it started, then it'll, it'll lift. And I've got compound underneath. And it is just going to be a labor of love here. And it's okay if it cracks. It's, you know, it's of no value. Here we go. go and up she comes look at that all right there we go plywood sounds good I don't think I have any separation now the only thing I've got to do is kind of clean this clean this off here this will take just a few minutes if you notice I'm trying to keep it kind of flat on the roof might show up better here so you see I try to keep it as flat as possible on the roof and just let it run and if I feel it catch just like it did then I stop and if I see the roof rolling up I stop and let the roof relax that way I don't end up with a snag and a tear biggest thing is to watch these corners since the skylight isn't um, you know a, a heartland product 
uh, the holes don't match up so it, actually it's it doesn't have enough holes in it to um, really satisfy me that this would be held down properly so the next steps you're going to see me do is try to match the holes up and uh, drill a few holes on this then we're going to get this thing finished up because it is hot outside okay i'm just going to lay this on top of the the old one and i'm seeing that some of the holes do match up which is a good sign there's quite a few here that do not or just don't even exist. So I'm gonna take just a second here and pop some new holes in this. I got me a marker here. I think I'll be able to reach these. And uh, just come in here and put me some marks on these. Put a wood block under this. I'm also gonna start with a small bit And then I'll come back with a larger bit just so I don't run the risk of cracking it. And I'm pushing ever so gently. Because again, this is $50, $56, I think. And I don't want to buy another one or leave a big old hole in my roof while I'm waiting on it. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? I mentioned this earlier that I have a PVC roof. If you notice, this is it's a lot thinner product, um, and I have to use this product called uh, X Trim 500. It's made specifically specifically for PVC roofs. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a fine bead a fine bead all the way around the edge here to seal this. You don't have to get too crazy at this stage. And I'm doing it right about in the middle. I want to be able to see my screw holes when I set this thing down. And um, there's all kinds of things that you can use, the putties, etc., etc. But I found on the PVC roof this is what gives me the better bond. And um, you can still peel it off if you have to later on. And this will give me the seal on the bottom. And then once I get it placed on top, I'm gonna put an ample coating uh, around the edges as well and on top of the screw holes, just to make sure we don't have any more leaks. Okay. New top. I'll try to line up these screw holes the best I can. And there it is. And I mentioned earlier I wasn't going to use the drill. Well, I am, but not to completely tighten them. Uh, on this drill, I have a, an adjustment. And I'm just gonna get these started, but I'm gonna snug them up by hand. And all I wanna do is get them started, and then I'll finish them up by hand. Okay, I've got all these set in by hand, and I'm just gonna run around now and push them down flush, but I'm not gonna tighten them with the, uh, with the drill. And I'll finish them up with a screwdriver. And I'm just gonna touch them up with a screwdriver and just make sure they're good and snug. And I just want to feel the feel tension on the screw. That's all I want to feel. As soon as I feel it get snug, and I see that there's no gaps between the plastic and the roof, I know we're done. And that's it. All right. All I've got to do now is seal it. 
Okay, this is it. The first thing I'm going to do is just put a nice glob of lap sealant around each screw just to make sure that I get them good and covered. No holes. Around the sides, glob in the middle. Around the sides, glob in the middle. Almost like doing a cupcake. That'll be the first thing I do. And this is where you don't want to skimp as I do the sides here. Thank you for starting that lawnmower. And it's almost like I'm stitching. I was a welder back in the day as I worked my way through college. So it's almost like you're doing a welding bead. Everybody's got their little trick. And this one's mine. And it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be functional. Because nobody's going to be coming up here and going, oh, look at your, look at the top of your roof, what you did. And if they do, I go, you know what, it don't leak anymore either. How about that? And you don't have to seal it on the inside. There's no need for that as long as you've got a good bond on the outside. So you saw me put the bead on the inside and set it down. That will help. And then around the screws. And I think that's it, y'all. Project done. So that's it. I will come up in a couple days and just kind of check the sealant and make sure that it's laid down nice and flat and that I don't have any issues but that'll, that'll flatten out nicely. And um, we'll just keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't leak again. How about that? Project done. Hope you found the video helpful. You know, it took roughly about an hour to replace this skylight. The two biggest challenges I had to deal with today, one was just pulling off all that lap sealant. It really sticks to the roof and you have to be very careful not to snag or cut your roof. So that was challenge number one. Challenge number two, it's hot out here today. And you know, that's just the way things are in RV travel. Sometimes things break and they don't break at the most opportune time and you just have to deal with them. With me, it was a leak. The longer you wait, you can create significant, significant damage to your RV, so you don't want to hesitate. You do find a leak, do whatever you've got to do to make some type of a temporary fix until you can get the larger challenge taken care of. And that's what we did. It took you know a couple of weeks for us to be able to get the dome in and then get a place to where we could do the repair. I hope you found the video helpful. We really appreciate our, our channel is just really growing. We thank you so much for all of you who have subscribed. And, uh, you know, we just do this for one reason. Yeah, that's right. We just love RV life.